Everyone is aware we have a new podcast. Uh, we have myself and Helpless Kittens here. Hello. Hello. Today, he brought up a very, 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 very good idea, and we are going to discuss it. And the biggest, and it's it's to do with uh, Nintendo and Pokemon right now. Uh, the conversation is going to be about Pokemon and what is wrong with it and how the franchise like, can make franchise. itself. Yeah, it, we, how, how they could make their franchise fresh again. I, for one, and I'm going to be absolutely brutally honest with everyone right now. I have not played the game since like Emerald. So that tells you how far back I go with that. Uh, it's not because I didn't want to play. It's because I didn't have like a DS or any or not. Yeah, DS to play the new games. So I was kind of stuck with Emerald for a while. So I don't know what the new ones are, and I haven't played them ever since Emerald. Uh, have you have you, uh, you played Helpless since those games? Yes. Have you played all of them? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, okay. All of the core titles and some of the non-core titles. Okay, so. He's going to be pretty much rev running this conversation for the most part. I can put in my two cents worth here and there. I have no idea what I'm really talking about because, again, I only played it since Emerald and Game Boy Advance. Tells you how old my fat ass is. But, <laughs> um, that is going to be like where I'm kind of at. I can only put in that much in there. Uh, it was a really, really, for, for me, it was a really, really great franchise to play. It was a lot, it was a lot of time, uh, time spending, time wasting. Uh, kind of thing just roaming around uh i've seen a lot of gameplay or at least some pretty good excerpts from uh the current pokemon generations on nintendo switch uh, i have not played it myself so again i have very very limited information uh, you have i'm betting played the switch versions yes so you have matter more fact, information this matter fact, the nintendo switch I, me and my wife played Skyrim Violet, and we 100%ed its Pokédex in three days. We yes. in the first half of the DLC, we 100%ed that Pokédex in three days. And I 100%ed this most recent one in, like, one day, because it was a little shorter. Okay, your mic did kind of cut out there, and you might need to get a little closer to it. I might need to grab a headset. <laughs> <laughs> might need to actually put a headset on. That that might be that might be helpful because when you were talking there, it did kind of cut a little bit. Yeah. All right. So give me just a minute to. All right. So I'll rejoin here in just a. All right, so while he's getting his new his headset set up, uh, I'm going to kind of talk about a few things because he uh, is having technical issues over there. So for me, one of the big things with uh, Pokemon, as far as Emerald, Crystal, Gold, even Red and Blue, uh, very limited there. But as far as those games went for me, one of the bigger things with those were the fact that, I mean, yes, you had various regions that you could go to. Now, again, they were very limited with what they had as far as uh, expandability really was, as well as, you know, different things. But I, for one, even spending the amount of hours that I did playing those games, I never really 100% completed anything. I got the Pokemon and... Some of the Pokemon I didn't spend a lot of time going to actually going to find and look for. But then again, I was more for the game and for the playing than anything. So. All right, I'm back. See, that's clear. Start, that's nicer. Yeah. If, if I start echoing, let me know. Okay. I'll see what I can do. So as far as like Emerald went for me, I really enjoyed the, the game style of that. It was it, it was very down to earth for me. If. There was anything for, for me, anything that they could have done to those games were to make them right now. If I was to speak about this right now and say if they were to re-release the games on current gen of the systems, I don't know if they have. I think the biggest thing they would need to do is make it more of 
as far as today's age goes, a little bit more of a multi multiplayer kind of platform. And they did step into multiplayer with the newest one. See. You can't do story missions together, but now there's the thing called the Pokey Portal where you can go into that. And as long as you have a Nintendo Switch Online account, you can go in and play the game online and invite your friends over and they can run around the open world with you. Because the newest title was, for the most part, open world. Okay. And you can run around, you can get into Pokemon battles, and if your friend gets in a Pokemon battle, you can actually see them battling that Pokemon. Like, it's actually pretty well done. Okay. See, see how much, shows you how much I know about the game right now. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, the, they essentially took the, the way the core games ran and made it work in the Legends Arceus engine. Okay. And you didn't play Legends Arceus, did you? Again, I've only played Emerald. It's about okay. as far as I got. In Legends Arceus, the, you know, essential god of the Pokemon world, Arceus, pulls you back in time to, like, Samurai Age. Damn. Um, Sinnoh. Yeah. Back when the Pokemon were, you know, the Pokeballs were pretty new. And Sinnoh was just becoming developed and settled by outsiders. Like, you start setting up Jubilife Village in the game. It's not even a town. There's like less than 20 buildings. <laughs> okay. So, and you help set up Jubilife Village and get it really established in. And you do this whole plot about them discovering, you know, the Guardian Pokemon because they call the world. They call Arceus Sino in that game because, you know, they're arguing over sin their god that they worship Sino. You've got the Pearl Clan, which thinks Sino is the god of space. And then you've got the Diamond Clan, which thinks Sino is the god of time. And they they get into it and fight, and then they learn, oh, we're actually. Eventually, they learn, oh, we're worshiping different deity like Pokemon. Okay. Arceus is actually, you know, Almighty Sinnoh, which is actually Arceus, is actually over those. And they oh. learn that eventually and then they decide to name the region Sinnoh and not. It, it's really cool. But that game went open world or open area at least. Okay. And the way you were actually walking around. The Pokemon were walking around in the overworld. Like like Pokemon Let's Go style, you know, of the Kanto remake. They were actually out in the world. They weren't hidden and you in could, tall grass. Yeah, it, it wasn't a random encounter that popped up because you were walking around in this specific area. You could actually walk up and go, oh, there's a Ponyta right there. Oh, there's a Pikachu right there. And you you know, you could throw a Pokeball at it immediately, not even have to start a battle with it. And it was something new and fresh. And there was a whole issue with the development of that game where Nintendo took the development coding away from the game it was being developed for. Yeah. And put it to their own project, which was Legends Arceus. Originally, that code of the open world and everything 
was being developed for the Gen 4 remake by Ilka. And Gen, Gen Nintendo 4. Nintendo told him, yeah, Gen 4, Seno. Seno. Diamond and Pearl. Okay. Diamond and Pearl. Okay. okay. Yeah. Which, um, Ruby and Sapphire, the Gen 3 games, did get a remake. They were on the 3DS and followed the Alola games, the Gen 7, Sun and Moon. But they did get a remake. I remember you saying that if they did remake Emerald or whatever, they kind of did. And the post game dealt directly with um, Deoxys and Rayquaza. Okay. See, that tells you how much out of the loop I am with Pokemon games. Yeah. But the Legends Arceus, the way that played, that was supposed to be the Gen 4 remake. And Nintendo told them, no, you can't take liberties like that. We wanted the remake top down like the game was. And made them start over, which is why we got this cute little chibi art style because they had to rush and remake the game engine. And it ended up selling pretty well. I mean, I've got a copy of Diamond. Hmm. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond on my Switch. Because it was it was pretty good. Okay. But essentially what I'm getting at is now we've got this new age of Pokemon where it's full 3D camera. And so, oh, all right. yeah. And they just it's like they they were t- you could tell that Arceus was a test. They were seeing how the fans reacted to this. Because in the Gen 8 games we got the the wild area which was this kind of op- just open area of the map where you could walk around and you actually had a full 3D camera, could spin it around you, and the Pokemon were actually physically on the map. Walking around, you could see them before you engage the battle. And it's like they were just testing that full out with Arceus. But Arceus was a big success. They did, it didn't sell... You know, it's, it's not the most successful Pokemon game of all time by far. No. That is arguably one of three generations, depending on who you ask. It's either Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 5. Okay, I could definitely see that with Gen 2, because Gen 2 brought in... So, Gen... Okay, so Gen 1... I, I, I can understand... Gen like, 1 was the first. It's yeah. a legend. Yes, it's a legend, because it brought in the whole storyline of Pokemon in general. And it had legendary yeah. Pokemon that I could actually go and physically catch. But they yeah. were only limited to the specific game. So, like, uh, I think uh, Red... Oh, I know they did that with Gen 2, but I don't know if they did that with uh, Red, Yellow, and Blue. Uh, Red had Moltres. Uh, yellow had Zapdos. And Blue had Ar- Articuno. That's not the way that worked, but yeah. <laughs> you could catch Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres in Red and Blue. Okay, I thought that. I, yeah. I, I'm almost. I almost want to say well, again. I don't. Yellow was a remake of Red and Blue, or if you know, for Japanese, it was Red and Green edition. But Red and Green edition. Yellow. Yellow was the special. Yeah, red and green. Green was the original Japanese release. Was red and green. But then just under a year after red and green came out, it came to you know Western audiences, and they decided to drop the green and go blue for outside of Japan for the second uh, game. So they decided, oh hey, the Japanese, we're gonna get these all these special edition greens that no one else will have. Unless you no, buy it in Japan. No. Blue and green were essentially the same thing. But one one was more widely available. Blue was more widely available to the general public. 
yeah, because when it came out, everybody thought that was it was going to be something new. It, it's like now they just changed the the Pokemon on the cartridge, and like it's it's almost identical to green as far as coding is concerned. So, okay, for, we're getting way off track of 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 the <laughs> the original description of the conversation here. But so again, what was the original Pokemon for green on the cartridge? Venusaur. Venusaur. So it was supposed yeah. to be Venusaur and now Blastoise. Yeah, but since the grass type starters are typically green, they put the grass type starter on the green cartridge. And they said, okay, well, we'll just swap it for Western audiences and do the water type starter. Because red but cause Charizard fire and water. was such a yeah, and Charizard was such a massive you know, Char Charizard is by far the most popular of the Kanto starters. Oh no, I'm saying I, I think I, this is gonna like piss off a ton of Pokemon He's players. Not the most useful in battle. I am not Matter talking fact. about most I'm not talking about most useful. <laughs> I am talking about the favorite out of all Pokemon. He is a yeah, favorite. Yeah, I mean Char he is a favorite, yes. Like Venus and Blastoise are not. Yeah, he is one of the top favorites out of everyone. Yeah. Again, so they, so when they, when they decided too. to swap one of the cartridges, they decided to swap Blastoise, to swap, you know, swap Venus War for Blastoise instead yeah. of Charizard because of how popular Charizard was. Yes. Which, I mean, I get it. I'm more of a Venus War fan. I love I'm Bulbasaur. Okay with, I'm okay with Bulbasaur that. is my favorite non legendary. Yeah. No, I mean between between I between Blast between Squirtle and and Bulbasaur between those two I could never actually pick one. Like if if I choose Charmander every time because I'm more of a fire yeah. guy, anyways, because I chose every single time I had available I chose a fire type. Second playthrough, yeah, third it, playthrough, I'd probably like choose one of the other two and see how they played. But I always chose fire types because it's funny on top of. On top of statistically, of Bulbasaur being the best starter for the game because it gives you type advantage in the first two gems instead of just Squirtle giving you type advantage in the first gem. Bulbasaur will give you type advantage in the first two. So when you compare their stats and available moves, Venusaur is far superior to both of them. Far superior. In terms of in terms of competitive play yeah huh matter of fact charizard is the worst for competitive play out of the three <laughs> but people love the way he looked yeah the whole dragon-esque I mean, he, he was a dragon-esque salamander he was cool yes i gotta admit i like the way he looks he's pretty cool i still like venusaur better but <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no. no. Okay. But so going back to what I was saying with this open world thing is, you know, Arceus was clearly them testing how audiences reacted to this chain drastic change in gameplay. Okay. And it feels like you know, we know Arceus was very well received. But it feels like they took a step back from it because in Scarlet and Violet, they went back to the battle system, to the mandatory battle system. You can't catch Pokemon outside of battle in Scarlet and Violet. You just can't do it. You can't be in the overall walk around and go, oh, there's a Vulpix right there and just throw a Pokeball at it. You can't do that. You have to engage the battle. Mm hmm. And it, it to me, it felt like a step back from everything Arceus did right. So instead of stepping forward into a new j age of Pokemon styles, they're like, no, we're just going to take a step back and go back to dumbassery, yeah. essentially. Well, not dumbassery, but they, because there's nothing, you know, really bad about the way the Pokemon games play. No, Pokemon they're games are solid. They're pretty bug free. 
Most um, of them are, yeah. Like 99% of the most time. Most of them are. Yeah, yeah, 99% of the time they are bug free. Which says something about Pokemon but games. To me, you know, they released Arceus as like, hey, this is how the gameplay could look if we did this. And everybody was like, yeah, that's awesome. Let's go. And then Nintendo took a step back and said, okay, well, we're not going to go full on just full on there just yet with the core games. Then why did you test it like that? I mean, now we are getting a sequel to Legends, to the Legends uh, series. It is a series now. They've said there's going to be more, and they've announced a new one that's going to take us back to Kalos region, specifically Lumio City. And I don't know if it's going to take place in the future, in the past, or where in the Pokemon timeline it's going to take place, but hmm. they've showed barely anything on it. It's going to be called Pokemon Legends ZA. ZA. Which is interesting. ZA, which is interesting that they would pick that. Because in the Kalos games, there was a character that you met that was over a thousand years old. He was also like a giant. He stood over twice as tall as any other character in the game. And like he was like a good eight, nine feet tall. His name was AZ. AZ. AZ, the letter A, letter Z. AZ. Nine feet tall. Wait a minute. I thought. And he, he just, he's over a thousand years old we know in in the game they describe him and explain him as there was a you know a great war between multiple regions over a thousand years ago and that he is the one that fired the ultimate weapon the big laser cannon thing he is the one that fired that so he just actually to... pulled the trigger on it. So I type in Pokemon AZ. Uh-huh. And I get trainer. Pokemon trainer yeah. AZ Cerebi. Yeah, he's he, he was a trainer. He specifically had a Flabebe, I want to say. It was either a Flabebe or a Floet. Oh boy. I'm really behind. It wasn't a Florgis. It was either the beginning or the middle of that line. But okay, let, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna pull up the the Pokemon Wiki right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so here, here's the here's the definition of AZ. Yeah. Now again, I am way behind in this gaming wise. So this is all new information for me specifically and. You've been really learning under a bridge, in. dude. Yeah. No, I yeah. really need to get back into this now that I'm I'm seeing this all because I'm just like. Oh, wait a minute. What? Because I knew about ho O's like, and I knew about part of ho O's backstory. But with the Tin Tower and creating yes, the dogs out of the souls the of the Pokemon that died. Yeah. yeah. Saving Pokemon souls. Yeah, I know that. He's like, yeah. the, he was the gatekeeper of the Pokemon afterlife, essentially. Essentially. I guess That's yeah. what I got from it, but yeah. Never thought of it that way, but yeah okay i can see that <laughs> so all right so here's what it is with az it actually is it comes from the poke this comes from pokemonfandom.com uh wiki the conversation is az az is a character appearing in pokemon x and y again that's probably why i don't know that lysander yep. believes him to be the descendant of the original az who built the ultimate weapon, but was far from the truth. He is, in fact, the very same AZ. So he is essentially, again, this is a Pokemon trainer, a human who has almost immortal-like powers. Like, he is basically immortal. He's, he lives for fucking thousand years already. We, we already know this. Like, he is old as shit. Yep. So he has seen everything. And everyone like he knows all the like big league trainers. He's he's probably either met them or seen them in person at least once or twice. Gotten like a physical like kind of vibe with them. Seeing and he's well, probably I mean seen... probably not because he is so massive 
they there would have been some reference to him had he been uh, yeah. out and about in the public eye. I mean, a, a nine foot dude. I, I don't. I, again, yeah, that's really really large. But again, he, he's lived for a thousand years, so he's probably p- p- picked up a, a good few tricks of the trade. He probably has seen Pokemon that can kind of disguise. I mean, he's Ditto for God's sakes can change its size. Why can't a Pokemon help a human do that? It's probably yeah, a Pokemon we we've never they- seen. Pokemon that can do that. See, but, I'm, yeah, just, I'm, just, I'm just kind of putting stuff out there. Like, I, it, it, it probably has nothing to do with the story. It probably will not happen. But again, he's probably seen the big trainers and gotten a vibe or a feel for them, whether or not talking to them. I mean, again, this is just me adding backstory to the guy that is a thousand years old. And created a massive laser <laughs> and decided to say, oh, I'm going to nuke the world. Boom. But no, he, he fired it at a different region because they were at war and would and refused peace. And they, the, the two regions just refused to stop. So he's like, here, fine. You cease to exist. Yeah. So he stopped it. Yeah. So, I mean, again, he is he I, 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 as a character. A lot of people would see him. I, I, I know where people would see him as a villain, technically, because he pulled a, a big genocide and everything. But he's also a savior because two sides refuse to stop. OK, we're going to he's like, all right, you decided not to pursue peace. Here you go. I'm stopping you from doing anything altogether. Game over. Start from the beginning, which in turn, not only Yes, destroys a ton of lives and a ton of Pokemon and destroys part of the world, probably. But then yeah, again, we, he we also know, saved it. We do not know what happened to this other region that, that ancient Kalos was at war with. Some people were thinking that it was going to be Paldea. Because in real life, Spain is located right next to France. Okay. And that the crater at the center of Paldea was going to be the impact point of that weapon. Well, they didn't state the origin of the crater in the new games, but they did say the crater was older than the firing of the weapon from Kalos. So it can't be that. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. So, and, and here's the other thing. So, uh, appearance. So, the, again, AZ is often depicted as an extremely tall man standing over nine feet tall, which is a side effect of him activating the ultimate weapon. So, he yep. could have, uh, the ultimate weapon could have changed him in other ways that we don't know. So, it changed his height from whatever height he was at to being a nine foot tall giant. So, yeah. Uh, there, there could be other side effects to that that we just don't know. He may be able to like just change his size. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm I, again, I'm making shit up as I go along, but it, it, it very much could make sense because it's it's Pokemon. A lot of crazier shit have happened. Like Ash never growing older. Hello, anybody else want to point fingers at that one? Actually, there are two really big theories for that. <laughs> All right, let's hear them. No, I seriously. Want to, I want to hear this. Okay, the, the two most popular fan theories. One of them is really fucking dark. Okay. The other one is actually child-friendly. I think the dark one is where <laughs> it's Pikachu's mind doing something and making Ash no. real. Okay. Uh, you, you know, okay, you want to hear the dark one first, I take it? <laughs> Let's hear the dark one first. I'm, I'm for the dark side. All right. The dark one is that Ash is comatose through 99.9% of the series. And that it's his com- and that it's his coma dream. Um you know at the be- at the end of the very first episode, Pokémon I choose you where Pikachu jumps off Ash's back and finally accepts Ash's 
may be an alright dude and saves him from that flock of Spiro by firing off that Thunderbolt. Okay. That hit everything. The theory is th- that put Ash in a coma and Ash is dreaming the rest of this, which is why everybody changes but him. Okay. And there's some evidence that can support that through the occasional appearance of magic in the series. Define magic because animals using powers is magic. There are two points in this in the series in different completely different generations. I believe the first time was in Kanto or uh, Johto. The first time was in Gen 2. And then the next time it happened was in Gen 7. But Ash got turned into a Pokemon through the use of magic. Like, not, you know, was a human, a 10-year-old human crawling around on the floor saying Pikachu, Pikachu. Like, he got tra- his body got transformed into a Pokemon. Okay. Through the use of magic. I, I'm so I'm so lost here because I don't again I didn't buy is it was this from the TV show or the games? TV show. TV show. Okay. Ash 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 was never officially in the games. You're right. Okay. So um yeah. Ash from the games essentially was a character named Red, who was the original um, character from the from the manga and here let me look this up yeah red is the one that is ash but from the games red was actually the main character of the first generation games that you played as and red came back in generation two as the f- the hidden final boss on top of mount silver And all his Pokemon were like level eighty something. They were they okay. were all low eighties. Okay, I'm seeing it right now. So this is this is from Screen Rant of Well, being one of the weirdest episodes was when Ash does get turned to Pikachu. I again this is like so far out of my league here. I don't realize this one. I didn't watch them all. All the episodes, I I may have bypassed this one or missed this one entirely. Yeah. Okay, so it has a few fair share of weird episodes over the year, but a few that haven't come close. Can't even come close to Hocus Pokemon. Where Ash himself is transformed into Pikachu by so called Pokemon magic. Mm-hmm. People turning into Pokemon has been explored in the franchise once or twice before. Most will be Pokemon Red and Blue. Bill is transformed into a Pokemon when the player first meets him, and they must help him turn back. Uh, but Bill used science to do it. Okay. So, because the transformation happens at the end of the episode, there's an expectation that it's what So... It's and it's more like in it's, Unova. It's it's more well, what I'm getting here is it's more like a potion because I'm actually seeing a picture uh, uh, screenshot of this happening because it's it, yeah it, it's, it's been forever since I've seen this episode so it, it's not so <laughs> much okay so it's not so much as I would call magic I would call it more like drinking a potion and genetically changing yourself so which we already know they have the science to do it so yeah. They have the technology, they just don't do it because it's it's human rights kind of thing, I'm betting. But, but, but Bill actually crossed his DNA with a Pokemon. Yeah. Like, he had a Pokemon present to do it. Not just drink something that changed him. He had to get into a chamber and put another Pokemon into a different chamber that was connected and used science to merge the two. Okay. 
which he wasn't exactly intending to do. That was not the purpose of the machine. I that was the not exact. the plan. No, no. The, the plan <laughs> most definitely was not to merge himself with a Pokemon. <laughs> Physically. Yeah. Uh, all right. So anyway. Okay, okay wait, wait, wait. Let, let me let me... Okay. <laughs> All right. So based on again, uh, based on what I've the information that we have from this, because again, I never watched the episode. He's been forever since he's watched the episode, but it, it for for me, like this is just a screenshot of it. This is a woman with yes, a witch outfit. She's got the pointy top hat, red red hair. I mean, that's not the requirement of a witch, but she has red hair. Uh, she as has far as children are concerned, it might as well be. I'm not. It touching is a children that. show. I am. It I'm, is a children I'm show. I'm not touching that one with a ten foot pole. She's wearing a cloak. Why, but she, she has a star. When you say the word a witch, it. you think of a tall, pointy hat. Uh, yes, but but no it. red hair. That's not where I'm going with. Okay, I, I I was talking about the pointy hat and the cloak and yeah, the, but, you know the yes. outfit. Yeah, but again, yeah. it's uh, she's got she's got the whole ensemble. She has <laughs> kind of gloves on. Uh. And she's holding what looks like two different jars. One is pink and one is yellow. Now, I don't know what jar Ash actually picks because it does. I don't think it'll, if it does say I'm not reading that far, but it happens at the end of the episode. And the next episode is, I guess, just long enough where he comes back and comes like, oh, I'm back to being human again. Like that's, that's the, that's the whole thing right there. That's it. Just, he drinks the potion or whatever. And magically next episode not even like halfway through it he's the timer wears off and he's back to being human again like that's pretty much it that's the premise of it because it talks about it, it says because this transformation happens at the end of the episode there's an expectation that this will be continued into the next episode which it is only barely the spell wears off at the beginning of the next episode on all the time that ash was transformed into pikachu takes place off screen it serves to render the entire episode more bizarre since Ash turned into Pikachu wasn't really taken advantage of of any way to develop Ash's character or his relationship with Pikachu. See, and they actually, they, it's actually really, really funny because it goes on and says, this is a missed opportunity has perhaps unsurprisingly become very popular with some fans who refer to the transfer of Ash as ash chew I, 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 and it's better than peak ash yeah peak ash so and she's up yeah. on a different uh off screen as a fanfic fodder so basically people are just like taking this and running with it but yeah. i don't know like the again bill transforming himself into an actual pokemon actually like reinforces my issue with az so i'm gonna continue with that <laughs> Well, 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 let me tell the other theory on okay. Ash's Let's hear the other theory. age lock first. Age the lock. other theory of Ash's age locking is after he wakes up from being shocked by Pikachu and everything, and at the end of the second episode, and also like two or three other times in the series... Ash sees Ho-Oh. Like, physically looks up, and Ho-Oh is in the sky. Episode 1 and 2. Yeah. Episode 1 and 2, and... Are you about to be before the... He, before he goes to Johto, he sees Ho-Oh again, and then when he finishes Johto, he sees Ho-Oh once more. He has seen Ho-Oh multiple times. There is a Pokédex entry somewhere that, in in Ho Oh's lore, that says that any that gaze upon Ho Oh are blessed with everlasting happiness. Well, we know Ash is not always happy through you know all of it, but it's that Ash. The, the theory is that Ash is special. And, you know, the pokey gods, whatever, have some plan for him, so they have given him everlasting youth. 
but magically altered the world to where nobody points it out. That's the PG version? Yes. Doesn't sound PG. That, that's the friendly version. That is sounds... that he saw a ho ho and has been blessed with everlasting happiness. I, I'm gonna go when... I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and run with that. But <laughs> he, here's the thing with that. We we've already spoken about Ho Oh being the kind of the guardian of uh, the souls of Pokemon. What yeah. if and this probably will take no traction. What if Ho-Oh saw Ash dying from Pikachu's electrical shock because a Pokemon are, we, we already know this, Pokemon are more sturdy than humans, okay? So, oh yeah. what if Pikachu's electrical shock was too much for 10-year-old Ash's body, accidentally killing him? As a result, Ho-Oh is just magically kind of flying by, sees what happens, and instead of, like, letting Ash's soul kind of float off into the human's version of afterlife. Let's just go with that. Yeah. That, he instead grabs because, because Ho -Oh is essentially the guardian of Pokemon souls. So he does have the yeah. ability to see souls as well as influence them in a certain way. What if at the time of Ash dying, Ash's body soul rises out and Ho -Oh sees that and says, no back inside. Right at, the, right at the moment, Ash's starts, body starts to separate from his soul. Ash wakes up, sees Ho -Oh flying away as a result, and then Ho -Oh just comes back a couple of times to check on him, see if his soul is still kind of, you know, staying in there. Because again, he's not yeah. the human soul god, he is Pokemon soul. So he's just coming back to check that his work is not being messed up in any way or like you know, glitching out on. So it comes back three times. Sees, sees him three times total and realizes, okay, this is good. Let's move on. As a result, because his body and his soul, he died, his body and soul separated for a split second. He is now everlasting, everlasting youth because his body is, was technically dead and his soul was just shoved back inside. Yeah. To yeah. see something like that. It, but when it comes down to it, the actuality is probably just the, the actual the actual region reason for Ash's everlasting youth is they wanted to keep the train going of it being for kids and there being a child main character. So they just kept saying Ash was ten and just never aged him up. To keep it more centered on youth. Well, technically, they do that's the it. actuality of it. But <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I'm then I'm they have the adults like us that are not the primary audience. That are not. They have the adults like us that are not the primary audience. Trying to find some canonical what reason do for you it. Mean? The canonical we are the reason. <laughs> <laughs> when the primary audience are the ones that are actually 10 and don't care. <laughs> That's probably the the truth of it. But this, I'm going to take okay, hold on. I'm going to stab that one with a fork and we're going to be like, you know they did the same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yugi being as young as he is, never aging. But actually no. He never ages though. He never changes. In Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the second series, at the, near the beginning, Yugi Muto comes back, and, and he has yeah, gotten to taller. He, he yeah. looks like Pharaoh. He looks like he that does when Pharaoh takes Pharaoh. over. That he, was Pharaoh. No, it wasn't. Yes, it no, was. that was Yugi. Yes. Yugi came it back, was not. and it he was... had aged up a little. It wasn't Yugi. It was Pharaoh, because it's the same voice as Pharaoh. It was Pharaoh. Because he still because... had the Millennium Puzzle on him. Yes, but Pharaoh had left him. That was Yugi. Yugi had aged up. What happens to Yugi's body <laughs> in the original series when Pharaoh takes over him is Pharaoh ages him up. Temporarily, that's why he gets taller and his voice deepens 
That's not actually Pharaoh's voice. That is Yugi's voice as a late teenager. You ruin it! Ruin, ruin, ruin! <laughs> <laughs> yes, th that was not Pharaoh. We actually don't see Pharaoh again until um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions movie, which is the one where Kaiba, like, starts messing with the Shadow Realm and or goes back in time or something. I haven't seen it, but whatever. It, he he finds out that it was Pharaoh that was beating him all those times, not Yugi, or at least he believes that it was Pharaoh, not Yugi. So he wants to go back and challenge Pharaoh to prove he's better than Pharaoh. Whatever. Well, we're stepping away from Pokemon, but I just I needed to point that in there because yeah. that was just my thoughts. But it was wrong. <laughs> no, you cannot. You know, no, nope. that was not Pharaoh. No, nope. that was not Pharaoh. Nope. That was a more aged. Youth. That is, that is, that is a conversation <laughs> for another time, an argument for another time. I will ruin you. Yu Gi Oh was okay. my thing. It was Pokemon was kind of a side project for me. Yu Gi Oh was my thing. Don't ruin it for me. You see, Pokemon was a side project, was a side thing for me. I really like Mon I really like Monster Rancher, but Pokemon killed Monster Rancher, so yeah. All right. <laughs> so, kind of back to our conversation of Pokemon and on what what they could change. Okay, so we've kind of talked about specifically um, the games. The games. <laughs> so. All right. So again, I as as we've said before, I am completely out of this loop, and it's more concerning the fact that I don't know half of this as I should. But and now that he has said that they kind of done an open world kind of multiplayer esque thing with Legend of Arceus, and with hopefully with they've done again they've done no trailers no teasers nothing as far as the new pokemon game goes za but they have done a teaser a teaser really yeah they have done a teaser it doesn't really show anything it shows like a diagram of lumio city and it says lumio city redevelopment project on the diagram but they don't actually show like any thing that could be considered in-game footage even remotely basically it's just a diagram of the city and that's it yeah okay well i don't consider and that then the title well okay well we see a i consider that a teaser i consider that a, a teaser yeah i consider that yeah. a teaser too but then again yeah. i mean here's the thing with that okay so if there's no information on this right now at least none that we currently have in front of us at this moment uh, about it being anything the one thing I would if they decided to do this and I hope they like let everyone know before they release the game ZA if it has the open world kind of multiplayer ask that they have with Legend of Arceus I would very much go and buy a switch right now I would go out and buy a switch right away if I didn't have one already and buy the game because if they took a step back from Legend of Arceus and did the, the next generation, uh, as you're saying, it, not as open world, not as multiplayer. Uh, well, they did have a they did have an open world kind of 3D representation, and it was very politically correct. But if they didn't stick around and have the multiplayer come back, I would be kind of shocked. Like that, that would be an open statement for everything because. If you have friends that like are, don't live around you or live around you and you just don't want to meet up, you just want to stay at home, chill with some popcorn, play your game on your TV while you guys kind of eat and do other stuff, and you want to hang out that way, multiplayer games are essentially what that is. Like, I have met more friends, case in point with Help Us here, man. I met him playing Mass Effect. I no, you didn't. No, I didn't. What, what, what did we meet playing? No. Star Trek Online. Star Trek Online. What? Yeah. S 
specifically the ground battle inside the Dyson Sphere. Really? We met on the ground war zone inside the Dyson Sphere. God, yeah. it actually does take me back there for a hot second because I, I haven't touched the ground war zone map in like forever. Yeah, I mean, since we played it together. <laughs> I did play it after that because I had to grind up the reputation factors to six, which yeah. took up was a bitch and a half. But so I met I met help us here playing Star Trek online as he has so specifically said I I I thought it was something else to be honest. I have met a ton of my friends playing video games. I've gone out to meet them. I have I've met one. I've met one after the other and I've actually gone out to meet several of them. I've gone out to Florida to meet one. I've gone out to New York to meet another, uh, San Francisco to meet another. I've gone across the pond. I met a buddy out in Ireland. So, I mean, and I'm actually taking the time to go and do this because I enjoy playing games with these guys. I enjoy meeting these people because hearing them over a console is one thing. But if you want to go and meet them, that's great. And I've always had more entertainment with that. Yeah. So, which which reminds me, I have to I have to take a trip down to you one of these days, or maybe when I go yep. down to Florida again, I'll stop yeah. by. But not really on the way. But <laughs> I'll, I'll make a detour. I promise. Okay. But yeah, like I I I enjoy this because. Meeting, is, me, meeting everyone that I, not, well, not everyone, but I, meeting as many of these people as I find online in the real world is more highly entertaining factor. So if multiplayer games bring people together, I dem almost demand that games have a multiplayer version because of the connection that it brings us to games. Because you can talk to people online, you could work for these people, and they can be halfway across the state, halfway across the world. It don't matter. Their work, but the moment you sat down and play video games together, it's a whole different ballgame. So I, I think that if they if Pokemon doesn't come back to that multiplayer s style where you can not do the story, but you're just kind of roaming around looking for Pokemon, doing battles and other stuff. That would be a huge win to kind of bring it back. Like, huge. yeah, I mean, for the longest time, the only real multiplayer Pokemon had was competitive against each other using Pokemon teams, just battle. But now they've introduced a cooperative um, play to the game. Yeah, which I think really gave it. A bonus. Yeah, it, the mechanics of the game still felt like Arceus, but backed down. But as far as the multiplayer played, it played pretty well. Again, this is coming from someone who 100% uh, in his Pokédex of a thousand plus Pokémon in three no, days. No, there's, there's no... Um, it was 400 Pokémon. There was no national decks there. Okay, so it was just based on that one. Yeah. But here's the thing with that. Okay, so we've kind of discussed how Pokémon could step their game back up to where it was. I want to kind of stack, take a side step here. We're still talking about Pokémon and everything that is in it. I want to talk about specific Pokemon now. Now, first one I want to absolutely add, and this is this is gonna trigger. I, I I know this is gonna trigger some people. I want to discuss the evolutions of Eevee because again, isn't it? Are they all adorable? Yes. I'm not gonna change that fact. They're all cute and adorable. I am triggered by the amount that there is. Okay, we have Eevee as a base evolution. That's base right there. That's baby Pokemon. Eevee yep. has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different styles. I'm having them up here. Okay, I have it all up here right now. We have Sylveon, we have Umbreon, Espeon, Vaporeon, Glaceon, Jolteon, Flareon, and Leafeon. All different characteristics of the different types of Pokemon. So Vaporeon's water, Jolteon's electric, Flareon is fire, Espeon is psychic, Umbreon is dark, Leafeon is grass, and Glaceon is ice, right? 
Now, there was supposedly nine, a ninth one in yep. the works, a ninth evolution in the works. Everybody was expecting there to be another one with Generation 9 with Paldea. Because in the anime of Generation 8, there was a trainer that had an Eevee that couldn't evolve. They tried touching it with the various evolution stones from Kanto, and it, it couldn't evolve. They actually did a DNA scan on it and found out that its DNA was even more unstable than Eevee's should be, because Eevee has unstable DNA. That's why, it That's why so it's options. the evolution Pokemon. That's why it evolves in so many different manners. Yeah. But even among Eevee, its DNA was unstable. And everybody thought we were going to get a new evolution off that. And we didn't. And it just... A lot of people think that um, Nintendo was planning it, or Game Freak, or Creatures Inc., that they were planning on a new evolution and either couldn't decide on which type to go with, or just, for some one reason or another, just scrapped it. I mean... You could go because you don't have rock, you don't have steel. Yeah, there's no dragon, there's no bug, there's no flying. Yeah, so you have, you uh, have all there's those no poison type. I could see where they would be having trouble yeah. with it for a ninth evolution. I would think that if, again, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there and everyone can either disagree or agree with this. I don't care. I think that if they to choose a ninth evolution to have with the new. Game coming out, if they decide to do it. Again, this is their decision, it is their game, it is their options. I think that one of the uh, evolutions should be something like a dragon type. Because if if we're talking that person's... Uh, Eevee's uh, DNA was even more radically, it would need something very, very strong to stabilize it. Because I'm guessing that all of these ev evolutions all stabilize Eevee's DNA, right? Yeah. So yeah, if it's into even, a specific type, yes. Yeah. If if we if if this EV is specifically just more just unstable, it would need a strong base or a strong evolution to stabilize its DNA. So you could go with dragon or you could go with steel. Like those would be the two options I would think because steel is a very very tough Pokemon. Uh, dragon is even more tough, but Again, it's entirely their choice with that. I just think, I, it, again, I don't like how Eevee has become the, uh, the the differing of types because it can evolve in so many different ways. I it, it triggers me to no end. Am I okay with it? Yes. Am I a little upset by it? Yes. Do I want it to stop? No. I'm going to be honest. It's kind of cool. But I didn't know this as well. So Eevee, again, I don't know the sizes are differentiating anything because most of the time with a lot of the different like representations of these pokemon they're not specific in their like size so a basic normal eevee has a has a height of one foot it's one feet tall so literally it is a pocket dog you can stick it in your purse and move on so um I, I don't know, like, uh, uh, Eevee, I think one of the, the, I think the Eevee should, should go either the route of Steel or the route of Dragon, one of those, one of those two options if we want to go that route, because as f the, there, are, oh, let's look it up, because I want to, I want to look this up, but how many, how many Pokemon have this type? Uh, Which so, type? Let's do amount of Dragon type Pokemon. Cause I don't know what I don't know how many dragon type Pokemon there are. Okay, the EV in question here was near the end of Generation 8's anime. Okay. The Galar region. 
which was based on United Kingdom, aka yeah. Great Britain. Uh, Gallo, not Kalos. So yeah, G- Galar. 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 Okay, so yeah. not Galar. not the, the Gallo region. Okay. No, but apparently the trainer in question here was a girl named Chloe. Okay. And apparently it just nothing ever came of it, and they just doled it off to Evie doesn't want to evolve. Which isn't po- which, which is entirely possible because Pikachu doesn't want to evolve. Yeah, Pikachu doesn't want to evolve in the anime. In the very first generation, Ash's Bulbasaur is reaching the point where it is going to start evolving, and it is using a lot of its energy to fight it, to not evolve. Does that make like it stronger? Starts, like it starts the glow of the evolution process and starts fighting it. And eventually, they um, Ash Everstones it, I believe. Just so it doesn't have to go through that anymore. But, yeah. All right. So, uh, right now, as of present, present time for Dragon type Pokemon, there are only 90 different Pokemon, including unique forms and mega evolutions that share this type and 30 different moves with it. So, if you want to expand that, I would think to expand that a little bit because there are more of the basic types than there is anything else. Again, they're the basic types like uh, fire, grass, water, uh, rock, rock or earth. It's it's rock, right? It goes by rock, not earth. So yeah, rock. So we have those. We earth, have those earth type would be ground type. Ground type. So like yeah. uh, there's a lot more of the basic styles than there is uh, like the specialty styles. So I would think that steel, uh, gyro, as well as the, the mechanical ones, because um, clink, that's what, gyro, right? Clink? Clink. Some stupid. Yeah, clink was a Gen 6 Pokemon, I want to say, that was just a gear. It was a living gear, and then it evolved into two gears, and then evolved into three gears. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was it, gyro or steel. That's that's what I'm. Gyro is not a type. It's, it okay. was just steel. Steel. Yeah. Okay. My Pokemon is so expanded now. It's beyond me, right now. But like like steel, like uh, the difference of them, like the the specialty types, steel, dragon, uh, for example could have a few more so i would think that if you want to like move a, a pokemon into it eevee would be a good good starting point but like say hey yeah no pokemon can evolve this way it's just 99 percent of the time they don't yeah g- going back to our actual original topic mm-hmm. on what the games can do to make to refresh in the gameplay and everything is I think one of the options would be to enhance the types, have like subtypes. So like under the grass, grass type Pokemon, instead of it being grass, have like a wood type, you know, a dirt type, have different types. Dirt would probably be, you know, uh, ground, Yeah. dirt, mud. You know, instead of rock, instead of just rock, we have rock, we have crystal, you know, we have gemstone, I think element I, type, you know, that, that they should it, it expand on the types, not add more types. Well, that's but kind of adding the, the, the more types. Deepen you, the types. You would, because then, then you would have to. You would have to go back through all the Pokemon and say, hey, yeah, no, these guys all have these subtypes, but they're just, you know, classified as these. Because you would have to say, like, like Sudowoodo, what would you classify him as? He's a ground-type Pokemon. No, he's not. He's rock. He's a rock-type. My bad. <laughs> but you would... You would <laughs> yeah. You would not expect him to... you Because it's, it's, its name is Sudowoodo. 
and it moves like a tree. It acts like a tree. It has branches like a tree. It has kind of green balls on the end that, that resemble tree like leaves. So, but it's rock, but it's rock. So yeah. no one would expect that because its name is pseudo widow. And it's a rock type, not a, not a grass type. Yeah. So, and, and if you look at Bulbasaur, why, why is it considered a grass type? I mean, sure. It uses vines. But you would with Bulbasaur, you would have to put wood in there because because Bul- no, or, Bulbasaur or, or, literally has a plant on its back. Yes, and a, plant type could be one. You and, know, and, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like you would have to be like, okay, all these guys, we'd have to go back through every single Pokemon and be like, okay, what do they all have in common? Okay, this one has a, a, a flower on its back. Bulbasaur grows into Venusaur and turns into this beautiful flower. Oh, okay, plant as well as grass. It, They've it would, already retyped Pokemon in the past. Well, yes, yes, I know, I know that because I've gone through Pokemon now, uh, several of the different Pokemon now, and I've noticed that a lot of them are retyped as well, not the original the yeah. way I remember them by, but yeah, like Gen One to Gen Two, there were several Pokemon that got retyped because of the addition of Steel and Dark type. Yeah, Pokemon like Magnemite and Voltorb. Yeah. Their lines were retyped as steel and electric because that made more sense than just electric. Hmm. But they because how many, they were made of metal. Okay, let's let's uh, let's look this up now because this Pokemon Almighty, like uh, Almighty Google. Clefairy, let's ask Pokemon like Clefairy and Chansey were retyped as fairies when wow. Gen Six came out yeah. because they added a fairy type. They said, okay. We're gonna just change these. They were normal types in the original in their original games, but they got retyped to fairy, which completely changed the way they interacted in the games. So we know they can retcon stuff like that, that they're willing to because they've done it. Yeah. And they the, with the fairy, they even went in and made Snubble's line fairy. Snubble was in Gramble were normal type when yes. they were brand new. Yeah. They're fairies now. They yeah. are pure fairy. They don't even have the normal type on them anymore. It's true. But I mean, like it it it, it would be kind of just adding adding more subtypes would just would it be cool? Yes. Would it be cooler down the line? Absolutely. Would it be for the next game? I don't think it would be a smart move because uh, sure would it be again i'm just uh, this is just me as someone who's trying to jump in back into this if you were to start changing a whole bunch of pokemon and adding subtypes to pokemon i would have to learn the pokemon the subtypes what is good against what what is good against what i don't know it, it for people just getting into this yeah not i'm not just talking older generation i'm talking younger generation as well if they're just getting into this it would be a huge step up and it would require a lot more thinking, a lot more strategic planning, but it would also like make more rage moments because it would make no sense on various different things. Um, no, I'm not saying specifically what would make no sense because games are weird and games have a lot more of stupidity to them than we would care to acknowledge. And a lot of it makes no sense. So I don't think that they should add subtypes into the game at this current moment. Uh, well, I mean, Pokemon is approaching the big 10th generation. I, I did this the next the- core game that comes out will be generation 10 because Paldea, aka Scarlet and Violet, is generation 9. Well, should okay. Then, on that note, if they're Generation 10, okay, this is the 10th generation of Pokemon games, core games. The next one will be, yes. So, ZA is not going to be 10, it's going to be 9. No, ZA is, they said, is going to be part of the Legends games, which are kind of like offshoot core games do they have a national pokedex uh 
the Legends Arceus did not. Did not. Okay. So yeah. I but if if I'm gonna the say the core this, game Scarlet and Violet is a legit core game. It's not an offshoot. That is core game. And it does not have a national dex either. Okay. Nintendo has said there's over a thousand Pokemon. Yes. It, it, it's a national dex is just no longer doable. And why not? See, that's that's where my like they they state this stuff like if okay. because they have to redraw every model. Oh, they can just do every. Re, well, yeah, they'd have to also redo it to a giant map as well, where every area and yeah. region would be accessible. I mean, could here's the thing: if they did this for gener, okay, generation ten. Let's let's kind of discuss that with that because if if we can do this with core games, if we can discuss what would make this better, I think now for everyone that is an old gen player like me as well, I think the biggest step up would probably be having that option so having a national pokedex where you could go to every single region that was available kanto we're going we're talking kanto johto we're talking all of them regions not the le like the legends where you get sent back in time or anything else like i'm talking legit core games of regions not anything else having the option to travel to those various areas and either through flights either through uh, ships, through trains, anything. The option to go to them as a generation 10 would step up the game in a big way. Sure, would it make the game unruly big? Absolutely. I'm not saying it won't. I'm not saying it won't be hard. I'm not saying it'll be a pro won't have issues on the line. They would have a lot of work ahead of them, yes, but it would also make a great step up. And for me, it would absolutely make me go pay for a $60 game because of all the nostalgia factor. Here's the issue with having multiple regions is how do you balance that? And Nintendo's been public with this is you, you can't really balance a game like that. What are we talking about balance? So, like the the point of the Pokemon games is that you start with nothing. You get given a starter yeah. that's not all that strong, but Can you get given a starter and you raise it and you build your Pokemon collection and you get stronger and stronger. And you know, you rise to the challenge of the next gym, the next town that, you know, is five to eight levels above you. And you've got to raise your Pokemon to get stronger on the way there. Eventually, you get to that point where you can't get any stronger. There's a level cap in the game of yes. 100. So what do you do? Make it to where – I mean how can you balance you know, well, that, that... 10 regions in a game where the point is constantly getting stronger? You so, would get to the end of the first or even the second region, and you're at level cap. There's well, nowhere to go. Here's where I would go with that. Growth wise. So, again, what you're saying is correct. There's a level cap of 100. So there's always been a level cap of 100. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And, and crystal, crystal gold and silver, for me, I would hit the level cap of 100 and always go back to beat the Elite Four. <laughs> Again and again and again and again, repeatedly. I knew their moves. I knew exactly what they do, when they would do it. I knew what they would use and when they needed to. And you're like 25 levels above them because oh, they're yeah, no, forward. I would, have max level, where... I would have max level characters yeah. and I would have their counters every single time, or at least yeah. a general but, counter for all of them. Again, but the Elite Four was like level 70, 75 to 80 there. Yes, but, so. st but still, my, again, it's the point of like, I, I beat the Elite Four so many times that. I think I maxed out the amount of um like the the the, the champions thing after you beat uh, Lance at the end the dragon master himself uh, you get you put your pokeballs up there and they they get put in the hall of fame for beating the elite four Yeah did you ever beat the um hidden boss the hidden true final boss to the game uh which one was 
Red. Pokemon Red. Trainer Red living up on Mount Silver. I think I might have once. Like, I might have stumbled upon him once. You had to beat Johto. Go, you had to beat all the jo- all eight Johto gyms. And then beat the Elite Four. And then you had to go beat the Kanto gyms. And then come back and beat the Elite Four again. See, and right. Lance. And then you had to go travel up Mount Silver and find him. And his Pokemon were mid mid eighties in I, level. I don't think I I don't think I ever beat him. Okay. Cause I might have stumbled upon him once, because I remember going through the mountain and coming upon this one area that <laughs> was really it, it was really, really weird at the time. I was really confused by it because there was someone up there that you could talk to and he would kind of shoo you away. What's his name? Red? <laughs> I think it was quite at the time. I think it was question marks. Uh, yeah, that might have been him. Because there was no name. It was just question marks. I'm like, okay, well, here's a pointless thing. And I never went back. Yeah. Um, but if, if we're talking about how we're going to balance this out, if you could. Okay. So here's my idea. Now, again, everyone can say no to this. Everyone can decide, no, this is a terrible idea. But if you're going to balance them out, because as case in point, you already said, they balanced out two regions, Johto and Kanto. And that was a feat. Yes, that was a Herculean feat, probably for the time being. For the time, if you were to do it now, I think it would be a relatively easier conversation—not not conversation, but it would be a relatively easier stand-up. So instead of, uh, so we'd have the two. We'd, you, you would have still the choice of Pokemon, but what you could do as a change of pace. So we have base regions where you start out in. I don't know if they decided to do in. Uh, I just got an idea for how you could balance that. I do too. But, so you could go choose ahead. with. So we have we have ten regions. So you have the new region where you could start out in, where everyone could choose to absolutely start out in with a new Pokemon, or you can go back to one of the previous regions, Johto, Kanto, any of the other regions. You could choose your starting Pokemon there. That would be your starting Pokemon. You would do all the gyms there, and you would then have a choice of moving on to another region. Uh, And each region would have, again, as far as I know, each uh, Johto doesn't have an Elite Four, I don't think, right? Johto's Elite Four is at the foot of Mount Silver in the Victory Victory Road. It, It is the same Elite Four in Championship Circuit as Kanto. Okay, so those They're two kind of like have, a dual region, yeah. So those two, They're, those two would it's be a little uh, weird. So yeah. every other region has their own version of Elite Four, correct? Yes, except okay. for Kanto and Johto, which share. Which share. So I mean, yeah. like that 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 problem solves itself right there. And with each region having their own version of Elite Four, mind you you would have uh, challenges to go through them and say again you could bring any type of pokemon but as far as the leveling goes you could still have it at a certain point so you start out say let's 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 use an example so you start out in johto you need to go through johto beat all the gyms there go over to kanto beat all the gyms there and then you can go to the elite four by this time, you're like level 80, 90, 100. You're, you're pushing those numbers, right? Yeah. So once you get there, once you beat that, once you do your region and you get to either either beat the region, the elite four and all that other stuff, as you go to a new region, this region would be at your level. So you would start out in your beginning region and it would work as as normal you'd play as normal you'd level up yada 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 you go to a new region like say let's let's use the word let's go to uh, paldea that's a region right paldea yeah paldea, paldea. That's, that's gen 9 yes let's let's say let's say you decide to do johto and do the johto kanto regions beat the elite four there beat lance you are given the option to either continue your journey in johto kanto basically getting all the Pokemon in those guys. Or you beat Lance, you put your name up there on the pedestal, 
and you're given the option, oh, hey, do you want to go to one of the other regions? And it gives you the list. You can choose the list, one of your favorite lists, and you would go there and everything would be at your level or above it. So if you're level, if you're level 80 and you beat Lance at 80, you go to a new region, it's 81 or 85, like the gyms, not the Pokemon itself, the gyms, like the gym leaders and uh, the gym people in there, the elite four, those, those, all those people, they would be at your level or above it, which would state, which would make it harder because if you were facing an elite four member in a new region, they would let, now your Pokemon would never be able to get this. It would cap out at a hundred. If you go face the elite four in another region, their levels are 101. That would be their max level. So it's always a level above you and always adds a certain degree of difficulties. Sure, you know their moves, you know what they will do, you know what they will do in a certain way if you beat them repeatedly. But, but you one come level. across an issue there of what determines that level. Because if the level is the highest Pokemon you've got... On you. On you. So if okay, you Okay, so what if I go in and change all of my Pokemon to baby level ones? If you go in there, if you go in there at level one, if you take all level one characters into your batch match with uh the gym leaders or the elite four there, here's the thing. They would be at the first level. So you you beat Lance. You beat Lance, you move to another region they will be capped at that level. So it will start out at that level. So you're 80, you go to a new region, you're 81. You leave that region, you come back with level one. So they're still going to be at 80. And that would just be how it is. Like there wouldn't be like, it, 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 would, it would kind of put that in perspective. Like the, the gyms, your, your second region that you decide to go to would be at 80. Your third region would be at 100 because by that time you have a level 100 Pokemon or at least six of them. So that's where but then you would hit a point to where it's not really getting any more difficult. It's staying at, but it's exploring all the regions, the max level difficulty that that's where it would entertain me. It would have, it wouldn't just have like a, what, six month period of you kind of going through the Pokemon, getting all, getting all the Pokemon of the region. Like, again, I'm not, you did it in, you, you did it in less time than most. But on average, it would take people six months to a year to get every Pokemon. Sometimes they can, yeah. So instead of making it six months in a year for one region, extend that. Make it, give it every region, give it all 10 regions. And you would have the option to stretch that game out. But then you run into two issues of, like I said, the balancing issue. Because if you balance it the way you suggested, you ignore that thing that Pokemon has always done of you are constantly getting stronger until you reach the end. You finally hit that point where there's nowhere to go. Well, the same thing but is... And then there's also an issue of the, Ninten the whatever generation we're in of console, Nintendo is always falling behind. I don't know if they do it on purpose, but they refuse to make a console that is powerful enough to keep up in the market of that time. I mean, you, you can say they're wanting to keep their consoles cost-effective and everything, but the Switch has the power of the 360. That is two generations ago. Hmm. Well, if if you really want to keep it to the point where you're always getting stronger, uh, you could, again, theoretically, this would probably be the way to do it. Instead of, you could have it as you would choose a new starter Pokemon. Again, this would be just like you playing the game. It's play, replaying the game. Instead yeah, of that's the, the way I was thinking of is they kind of do what like Ash does in the anime where he resets. He leaves the Pokemon he caught in that region 
he leaves them with a professor to be taken care of, and he goes to a new region and re- kind of restarts. Yes, he can take Pikachu. Yeah, but that's because Pikachu's like you know his first. That was his buddy. So the anime gave a reason for that, but in the game you could do that. They could do that. They could have it where you leave your stuff behind <laughs> in the in the previous region in the box system. And go and restart. And then once you beat the Elite Four, it yeah, opens all. that it opens that list back up. Or if you go back to a region where you've beaten the Elite Four, it opens your full box list back up. Okay. I'll take they that. They could do it that way. I'll take that. I'll take that one. That because that would be that that was gonna be my second choice with that because I mean because you were complaining about how you just keep getting stronger. But I'm gonna take that and run with it a little step further. So uh, as Ash sticks with Pikachu because Pikachu is his buddy and was this very, very first Pokemon, little obstinate that he was, still true and true, a friend. But here's the thing I'm gonna take that. So, first area you just start, the first region you like to start in, your starter Pokemon can carry with you to every new region. But I would say that it is going to be a, a Pokemon of last resort. I don't know. I, I just think you being able to take your starter Pokemon from your first area with you. Sure. Yeah, because if you level that up to 100 and go to a new region and restart, where the first gym is going to be level like 13. Your level 100 is going to destroy <laughs> Mop the 90% floor. of that game. Yeah. It's going to destroy 90% of that region, which I mean, that, ignores the fact of getting stronger again. Again, but yes, but again, I'm just saying like Ash <laughs> takes Pikachu with him. Ash uses Pikachu. Technically, if you want to talk about it, Ash is always using a level 100 Pokemon. Because you've seen yeah, but, P- you've seen Pikachu. The anime take down lets Pokemon. it work different. The anime lets it work different. Whereas you know, Ash beat Brock in the first generation in what? in the Indigo League. Ash beat Brock, the Rock type gym leader, because Pikachu one of Pikachu's attacks hit the sprinkler system and started spraying water onto the battlefield <laughs> and made Onyx wet. Which allowed Pikachu's electricity to hurt Onyx being a rock type when it was resistant. Yeah, but that, again, that's, that's mechanics like that can't work in the game. I mean, because Nintendo doesn't want to develop the engine that far. No, because yeah. then you start putting, you know, mechanics into the game that are too advanced for children to understand. I knew I don't I, I knew from a young age that you don't put electricity with water it just doesn't work out. But again, yeah, no, it's 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 putting a whole strain on things. But again, you could so for that. All right, let me take a step back on that one with then. Here's the thing. Okay. So you can still start with your it starter did, Pokemon. It either has to be a complete reset or they have to balance all of it progressively, in my opinion. A complete reset per region or just balance the multiple regions the way they did Gen 2, which would be infinitely harder. Yeah. But again, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. we, we could still take our starter Pokemon and. They would be their final evolved form, depending on whether or not you kept them as the final evolved. But they'd be level one. And keep all their moves that they have. So you want to have the Pokemon reset level as we transfer to a new region. Because then you're still keeping you're still keeping your starter Pokemon. So whatever you want to have a level one Charizard is what you want. Or a level one Blaziken. I mean Yeah. It adds a funny but factor to it. A funny factor, yeah, but you've undid the work. You, you've you made the work you put into that Pokemon mean nothing now. 
it's got taken away from you and you've got to do it all always, again yeah but you all regrind it back up that's a lot of the, a lot of games mechanics nowadays you go through an area and you regrind back up I mean, I suppose they could add some sort of prestige mechanic. Yeah, well, because they do a, it. Like, when you get a Pokemon up there, Dark instead Souls. of breeding. Well, I was saying instead of breeding to increase IVs and hyper training for EVs and everything, you could reset them back down to base to level one and get like a extra point that you could put into their IVs. See, that's where you're that speaking would be something to do. Because I don't know what IVs are, because that's like so In, far. Inherited value. Inherited value. So, so like increasing it, their It's attack. basically the stats, they're, the, their base stats that they're created with. So you like I could live with that. Okay, so I could absolutely live with that. I mean, if you increase their base stats that they start out with and you regress them down to like zero... Like and you, you start with like oh, let's just uh, you start with you start with a Torchic, okay, and you grind it up to Blaze again. You beat that area, you beat that region, you decide to move on. It gets regressed down to Torchic, but it increases its base value. Sure, against other types, it's not going to matter too much, and it's not going to be such a huge increase. It'll maybe be one or two points of uh, of your choice. Now, again, I'm saying one or two. I'm not saying a lot. I'm not saying giving them five. I'm saying one or two, and you would pick the value. So that means every time you went to a new region, you would have a total of 10 points, if you did it with just one, of increased value of your base Pokemon that you started out with. Essentially, again, essentially, if it's a Pokemon that can Mega Evolve, you can basically Mega Evolve it without Mega Evolving it. I don't know how much increased yeah. value the Mega Evolve does, but I'm just, you know. I mean, th they could do something like that, like a prestige thing. But they would have to give some sort of canonical, like, time flux device to use on the Pokemon to revert them back to level one or whatever. I mean, we, we have Arceus right here. He's the, he's the time Pokemon. I mean, there could be, like... Arceus, Arceus is not the time Pokemon. Dialga is god of time. Okay, Dialga. And, and Cel Celebi can manipulate time at will. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm just saying, like, uh, in Celebi... But was only to travel through it. Okay. Well, there are your two options. You have two time Pokemon already, and you just named them. So, yeah, the I, and Celebi. So, I mean, technically, we could... There could be an option where, uh, in Gen 10, in Generation 10, where... Uh, <sighs> that type of technology is created where Poke Pokemon trainers do make mistakes on their Pokemon. And sometimes they want to fix those mistakes. So, and the Pokemon want to fix those mistakes as well. I mean, we've, we, we've seen that ourselves with Charizard Charizard, when he transformed into from Charmander to Charmeleon, he became really lazy, did not want to help Ash because he thought he was better than Ash essentially. And uh, turned yeah. into Charizard because he saw Ash falling, so Charmeleon involved. No, in no, Charmeleon evolved into Charizard because he wanted to fight that Aerodactyl, and the Aerodactyl could fly, and he couldn't. So he evolved. So he evolved so he could fight the Aerodactyl. So I mean, again, he didn't care that Ash was in the Aerodactyl's claws. He was firing flamethrowers at it like it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't yeah, care if he it was going to hit Ash. But eventually, Charizard didn't calm down until he went to Charizard the Valley. The, no, that was after. Oh, in in Orange Islands, there was an episode called Charizard Chills, where Charizard got hit with an ice beam while battling in the Orange Islands because Charizard was wouldn't listen to Ash, and Charizard got hit with an ice beam and almost got frozen solid, and. Ash was rubbing his hands while trying to keep Charizard okay. And that was how Charizard finally started to respect Ash. 
and listen to it. Still, though, that's, that's I mean, that's. Yeah, the Charisific Valley was in Johto, and Charizard decided to stay there and train because he found out. They're, those Charizards were more powerful. Those Charizards are more powerful. They're bigger than him. It's like, yeah, Charizards are big, but in comparison to what? <laughs> you know, in comparison to a Pikachu, yeah, a small Charizard is big. And Ash's Charizard find out, found out he's actually pretty small for a Charizard. He's tiny. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, see, that's 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 kind of my... That's, that's right there is my point with that. I mean... You can change a Pokemon. That Pokemon can change their behavior. So why couldn't there be a technology to technically help them? I mean, they they have all this tech. Why why isn't that available? I mean, sure, they, they could do it for a Gen Ten. Like they they definitely probably could. They could probably sneak it in there somehow. It would be a one. It would be a, like a one off item that everyone is given. And you can only use or it not certain... not a one off item, but well, you could you... use it. In, I would say you'd be able to use it on any Pokemon, but it has to be max level, and yes. you have to put it through some trial or something to before it can actually work. Yeah, so some, some it would just be more mechanics, but and again, we, we the two of us not game developers, not at all zero zero percent chance of that, but we're giving good ideas. <laughs> Sure, would they be a well, pain to work on? Probably. We're given ideas that we think are good. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it doesn't mean they are good? Yes, but they they sound if they <laughs> again coming from a guy that hasn't played since Emerald and coming from a guy that's played every game since practically. practically. If we if, if the two of us can agree on this, have I played every mystery dungeon game or every ranger game? No, but have I played all the core games? Yes, have I played all of the close-ish offshoots of the core games? Like the Stadium and Coliseum and a few of the Ranger games? Yes. I mean, I've played Pokémon Tournament, which was amazing. <laughs> we need po Nintendo, if you're listening, we need Pokémon Tournament, too. <laughs> we, we need it. You heard it here first. You, they, they, the, 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 the customer the base demands it. <laughs> the people that made Tekken made Pokemon Tournament. They just released a new game. Okay, they are not developing a new game right now. Get them on Pokemon Two because we need Pokemon Tournament Two. Pokemon Tournament was amazing. All right, so. <laughs> See, well, we, we, you and me, I mean, again, we're not game developers, but we are giving good ideas that we think are good. I mean, it's up to the public and, and, our, and the viewers or people listening later down the line to decide, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. This should be put in because it gives that option to everyone that, oh, hey, I made a mistake while raising this Pokemon. I would like to change it because here's the thing with that. I made a lot of mistakes raising different Pokemon because I gave them moves that, again, didn't work and they were too costly to re replace because they were one-off moves that I could never find again. And I wanted to give them to a different Pokemon. So that gives you the option to kind of regress that. The TMs and stuff have been fixed with the newest game because now you get, like, kind of like Pokemon pieces like a tuft of their fur or a nick off their claw or something. It's like a little piece. And you take a couple of those and you make TMs now through those Pokemon pieces. And okay. that's the TM system. So they're still one-time use, but you can get as many as you want as long as you can make them. And they kept Pokemon Legends Arceus's a move system to where you can swap moves whenever you want. As long as the Pokemon has reached the appropriate level and learned that move through leveling up, you can swap moves whenever you want. You could theoretically go and put Tackle back on your Pokemon if you wanted. 
at level 90. Okay. You just go into the move system. You just go into the move menu on that Pokemon and swap the moves, which is good. And it allows you to experiment without being punished for getting it wrong. Yeah, see, that's the kind of stuff I wish I knew earlier. I would have bought my switch. I would have bought a switch earlier. But <laughs> again, we're we're still giving a good idea of like being able to regress your Pokemon down to one, starting fresh, but giving it kind of a prestige system. I mean, it it would kind of bring the game to a whole new culmination because then because then you would be able to pick your region. Pick your starting Pokemon, and then every time you beat a region, your starting Pokemon from your first region regresses or can regress. You could leave the Pokemon behind. You could even be given that option just to start absolutely fresh with no beginner poke with with just the beginner Pokemon that you are choosing in the region. You don't have to take it, but you can. And it would give that one Pokemon out of all of them the option to prestige and give it kind of increased base stats. Would a lot of people take that option? Absolutely. Who doesn't want a Pokemon that's a little bit more tougher than its than its base stats? I mean, give me give me a Torchic. I'll make Blaziken the most beastly thing you can find. Like yeah, it, and everyone has that favorite one type Pokemon. For me, for me, it's Torchic because Torchic goes into Combusken with with uh, wings and kicking legs. Turns into kind of a fighting type Pokemon, right? He goes fire. I know you could teach him fighting moves because I I think I did it once. It, yeah, it, it's just fire typed, but you can learn fighting moves, some of them. Yeah, so I mean, like you could turn Blaziken into Kickboxer. So I mean, I, like that's the whole thing. Like you you can kind of mess with that stuff a little bit, and you can kind of levy into it. So why not give that option as well to kind of give a base Pokemon a prestige like feelings. I don't know. That that would be kind of that would that would be a massive improvement, I think, and it would bring a lot of people to it. I think that would be a, a very very good start. I mean, even if they just like said, "Hey, yeah, we're we're thinking about doing this. This isn't a guarantee." And we want to see we want to see what the public thinks. We want to see what the the public player base thinks about this. Like if if you could get a not even not even a unanimous vote. Like let's talk let's talk real. If you got sixty percent of player base of gamer base that all play Pokemon and said they all said yes, this would be a good idea. They would then have to figure out how to put that in there. I mean, sure. I just I think I think it would be a step up. I mean, they've done they've done the open world, they've done the multiplayer. So, being able to give your Pokemon to be able to prestige would be another step in the direction of. I, don't know, I think it'd just be a step, and it would be. Uh, I think it'd be a good step. I don't know what the I don't know what the public would think. Let's let's ask them here. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, if you're watching this, feel free to throw comments on and yeah, let throw, us know throw, what you think of our ideas. Throw some of your ideas in there. Yeah, throw comments at us. I, I will be checking. I'll be checking the I'll be checking the comments. If you guys decide, oh hey, yeah, that's a good idea, and you let us know, we'll we'll do another we'll we'll, we'll kind of basically chat you guys out and like be like, this comment got six hundred likes. That's six hundred likes that agree with that comment. Like this is a good idea. No, this is a bad idea. I will check yeah. the comments. I will check them. I will pick out ones that we can talk about again. It will expand our repertoire and our discussions about all of this. And we we want to we want to know what the public thinks about a lot of this stuff because a lot of this stuff so far we've had crackpot theory. So far we've done the conversations of microtransactions. We're now doing Pokemon and what could be better. We're everywhere. So let's hear what everyone has to think. Instead of just us. Yeah, and tell us what to talk about and everything. And also, you know, comment on what we're saying. If what we're saying makes a ton of sense, let us know. It makes, it, it shows. If it makes no sense, 
Let us know. If, if you want to poke <laughs> holes in the sense, if you want to be like, no, that plan is stupid. Don't do it. Here's why. There is no don't way that Shepard has <laughs> a, a sorry daughter. And poke you holes. Know. We want these holes poked so that we can address them. Because it, it, it fuels the creativity of not just the developers of the games, of the movies, of whatever we are talking about. It doesn't just give them ideas. It gives us ideas as well. The public wants to hear it. The public wants to know. If we start putting our two cents worth into these conversations, not after the games are not just after the games are released, but while the games are being made, the games can be influenced by a certain degree by the public. I still think we're getting a Gen 5 remake this year. Of Pokemon? Yeah. Okay. I still think we're getting a Gen 5 remake this year. Yeah. So again, we just we just we just want everyone to like have this conversation. Everyone needs to be able to kind of do this. It, it really is it really is a really helpful thing for everyone to kind of put their two cents worth in. And as we've seen before on a lot of occasions, developers and game creators and even even some movie creators, they let stuff stay in to the movies and the games because they're funny. They don't even fit with the script, but because they happened, they let them happen and they make it into the final cut. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there was a thing about that that we talked about in the first one with the Mass Effect one yeah, about, should, Conrad, uh, about Conrad about Conrad Vernick. Conrad, yes. there's Yeah, Conrad Vernick. There was a bug with the second game where he treated you as if you had given him pure renegade responses. And they actually addressed that in the third game where he apologized. They left it in there and moved on with it. Because it was funny. Yeah, because people were like, wait, because even if you transferred in a save file that completely had the Paragon responses to Conrad, he still – there was a bug in the game that caused him to still act like you had given him the Renegade responses, and they actually left that in there and addressed it through in-game means which was good instead of just fixing the coding and acting like it never happened <laughs> yeah it'd be one of those things so uh, we are coming up on that kind of two hour mark right here right now so uh, do you have anything else to add to what could make Pokemon better Uh, besides cross-platforming, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cross-platforming. What is that? I've I've never actually seen Pokemon or anything other than a Nintendo Switch or Nintendo in general. All right, it's all mobile now, but <laughs> but that's Pokemon Go. Uh, no, I'm talking about Pokemon Masters EX. Okay, now you have me going to look. I'm getting out my phone right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. When did again? I am so out of the loop on this. It ain't even. It's, I don't even see daylight. Yeah. All right. Pokemon Masters EX. Yeah. EX app. Let's see what it is. Pokemon Masters EX. It is uh, by Dina. Dina Co Limited. Yeah. About this game, let's read it. Let's read the description. So, about this game, Pokemon Masters EX is all-stars battles with trainers and Pokemon. Team up with sync pairs from every region. Team up and interact with trainers from the Sui region to the Paldea region. And everywhere in between, villain arc concludes... Uh, well, this is probably about the thing. Sayo's arc, uh, Silo Saga Villainous Organization, reaches its third conclusion. Trainers don special outfits, hatch eggs, and team up. Enter the fray with a custom team. Okay, well, it sounds cool. I mean, th there's a Pokemon MOBA now <laughs> with lane battle link. The fuck? Yeah, yeah, kind of like 
League of Legends style, almost. Or Smite style. It's nowhere near as in depth because you know it's child friendly, <laughs> but it's called Pokemon. It's called Pokemon Unite. I personally didn't like it. I played it when it was first came out. I didn't like it, but it's it's got popularity. So, but it is created by the Pokemon Company. This one is created. Yes. Uh, five on five strategic battle. This one I didn't know about Pokemon Unite. I didn't know about. I just didn't know it was a MOBA style. I just did. Yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, Pokemon Unite is cross platform. That is a cross platform game. Specifically, yeah. specifically says in the description. So this this is one hundred percent true. Challenge fighters from around the world to unite battles on the Nintendo Switch system or a compatible mobile device. So. I guess we can call that cross-platform because it is between mobile and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, but I'm saying take Pokemon and allow Xbox to have it. Yeah, that would be yes, kind of cool. Yeah, I, I am an absolute Xbox enthusiast. I am biased towards Xbox. Yeah, But same. that's due to past, you know, interactions with Microsoft and Xbox. Very true. More Xbox than Microsoft, but... Because Sony treats everybody like crap and gets away with it. And Xbox tries to push down the barriers between the consoles. And Because I, I think gamers, ga yeah. we've already seen gamers can come together. Case in point is with Helldivers 2, like the Xbox gamers, when they show up, man, is it going to be a party? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will be. And I think that that would be a massive step in the right direction. <laughs> Because and Xbox has taken a step in that direction already. Oh yeah, no, by they're, they're, al they're, they're, allowing their first-party Xbox Game Studios titles to leave Xbox and go to Switch and PlayStation. You know, like the Microsoft Game Studios design of, of Obsidian Games, Grounded, is coming to Switch. I mean, and that's the. It's the whole premise of gaming. Yeah. Because Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, is now being quoted saying, when we all play together, everybody wins. We all play together, everything is better. <laughs> there are, you, here's, the, here's, the, here's the other thing with that. Everyone has seen the Helldivers 2 gameplay. I have posted some of my own gameplay of it. What are we really doing? holding holding other gaming consoles back here's the perfect excuse of that i have been playing again i've been playing hell divers for a couple of weeks now i've had some bugs some issues and they're not game breaking uh the game does crash on, on occasion but that has mostly to do with the amount of stuff going on on screen than anything the Servers Calling an upstrike on your extraction shuttle. Cough, cough. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> but like, it's different little things like that. Like it, it kind of does like set that up. And if games are more cross-platform, we will all enjoy them better. Because some people they don't want to play on a Switch. Uh, some people don't want to play on PlayStation. Case in point, neither one of us wants to play PlayStation. I will buy a Switch because some games are fun on Switch. I will never buy a PlayStation. I'm sorry, Sony. You just messed up way too many times for me to ever trust what you say out of your mouth. But uh, am I'm I keeping my mouth shut on the Sony debate right now? <laughs> that that is for a different thing. Yeah, but again, tune I in just... next week for what is wrong with Sony. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just said the title. There it is, right there. Title. What is wrong with no, Sony? No, no, no. Yes, it is a discussion that is going to happen now. Thank you. you, you you do not want me ranting on Sony for two hours. All I right. want to hear you rant on Sony for two hours because I think it's going to come to a screaming match. Oh, my God. It's it's bad. But again, I'm just saying, like, I, I'm a bias. I'm a bit of a bias. Uh, it, gaming together is better and cross platform yeah. should be a thing for everyone. It'll definitely help with uh, games because some people, they just don't like playing on certain systems. Uh, I've seen uh, uh, on several occasions, like uh, some people can't play on console. They don't have, like, again, people with disabilities. They can't 
they, they, they can. I, I've, I've, heard, I've even heard of the guy playing Destiny who played with his feet, with a, with a controller. So, I, I don't know why we're all keeping hoarding games for ourselves, hoarding games for specific consoles. There was somebody who recently got some public spotlight because he was, he was playing Hell Divers with a DDR dance. That's wild. That's wild. That just makes me giggle in all the right ways. Cause that is that for someone, for, for me, just to even think about trying to do that is really, really hard. So next week's conversation is Sony and what did they do wrong? So tune in, tune in for next week's conversation, please. I beg of you.